Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vijeta Shanai. I am Assistant Professor in Department of Biochemistry, Kasturba Medical College, Manipal, Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Today we will discuss biochemical basis for different types of jaundice. Before going to the topic, let us see how bilirubin is formed. Bilirubin is an end product of heme catabolism. Bilirubin is an end product of heme catabolism. So, how heme is formed? The lifespan of RBC is 120 days. When the RBC crosses its 120 days, the RBC lysis takes place and hemoglobin is released. This hemoglobin is further broken down into heme and globin. The globin which is produced, it goes to the amino acid pool and it can be reutilized. Whereas heme, it undergoes catabolism in the reticular endothelial cells of liver, spleen and bone marrow. So, the lifespan of RBC is 120 days. At the end of 120 days, RBC starts lysis. So, hemoglobin comes out and hemoglobin gives heme and globin. Globin goes for amino acid pool whereas heme undergoes further catabolism. So, the first step in heme catabolism is heme to bilivaridine formation. This takes place with the help of heme oxygenase system. The heme oxygenase system contains oxygen, cytochrome C and NADPH. During this reaction, carbon monoxide is released and heme gets converted into bilivaridine. In the next reaction, bilivaridine reduces and forms bilirubin. For this reduction reaction, the enzyme required is bilivaridin reductase and NADPH plus H plus gets oxidized and forms NADP and finally, bilirubin is formed. So, heme when it undergoes catabolism, heme to bilivaridin is formed and with the help of bilivaridin reductase, bilirubin then gets converted into bilirubin. So, this formation of bilirubin takes place in the reticular endothelial cells of liver, spleen and bone marrow. So, whatever the bilirubin formed in the reticular endothelial cells of the cells, they are lipophilic which means they cannot be transported into the plasma as it is. It requires a carrier, the carrier is nothing but albumin here. So, with the help of albumin, bilirubin, the two molecules of bilirubin attaches, it can be transported with the help of albumin to the liver for its further conjugation. Bilirubin which is formed in the reticular endothelial cells, they are not water soluble. So, hence it requires a transport. The transport here is albumin. So, one molecule of albumin carries two molecules of bilirubin and then it goes to liver for its conjugation process. So, in the liver, the hepatocytes plays an important role in conjugation process. Bilirubin reacts with UDP glucuronic acid in the presence of enzyme glucuronyl transferase. The UDP is released and it forms bilirubin monoglucuronide. In the blood, around 20 percentage of the bilirubin is in bilirubin monoglucuronide form. The same reaction again continues and finally, bilirubin diglucuronide is formed. In the blood, 80 percentage is bilirubin diglucuronide. So, there are two step of conjugation. The enzyme and the compound which is required for the reactions are same. In the first step, there is formation of bilirubin monoglucuronide and in the next step, 
there is formation of bilirubin diglucuronide this completes the conjugation of bilirubin in the next step whatever the conjugated bilirubin formed in the liver it has to come to intestine so what happens is with the help of bile the conjugated bilirubin excretes into the bile duct so this takes this is an active process it is the rate limiting step in heme catabolism this step is induced by drug such as phenobarbiton it requires atp binding cassette protein mediated by multispecific organic anion transporter so this excretion of bilirubin into bile is an important step and this is the rate limiting step in heme catabolism once bilirubin the conjugated bilirubin from the liver now it it has come to bile from the bile then it enters the intestine so this conjugated bilirubin when it reaches the intestine it gets deconjugated and free bilirubin is formed the free bilirubin which is formed is acted by intestinal bacteria to form urobilinogen and this urobilinogen further forms stercobilinogen urobilinogen and stercobilinogen both are colorless compounds the conjugated bilirubin forms in the liver and what happens to this conjugated bilirubin when it reaches the intestine in the intestine first there is deconjugation so what happens the conjugated bilirubin becomes free bilirubin and the free bilirubin is acted by intestinal bacteria and forms urobilinogen and stercobilinogen both are colorless compound whatever the urobilinogen formed in the intestine the 20 percentage of it goes for enterohepatic circulation as the name suggests it is the circulation between the intestine and the hepatic system so 20 percentage of the urobilinogen goes into the enterohepatic circulation it goes to the liver then comes back again to the intestine for its excretion during this enterohepatic circulation some amount of urobilinogen goes to the systemic circulation and it gets excreted in the urine the urobilinogen in the urine gets oxidized into urobilin we have already seen that urobilinogen is a colorless compound whereas urobilin is the colored compound the final excretion of this urobilinogen and stercobilinogen is as follows both urobilinogen and the stercobilinogen they gets oxidized into urobilin and stercobilin so when they forms the colored compound urobilin and stercobilin they give the color to the urine and the feces this is how the complete process of heme catabolism takes place so what is the normal level of bilirubin in the serum total bilirubin concentration is 0.2 to 1 mg per deciliter in that unconjugated also called as indirect bilirubin is 0.2 to 0.8 mg per deciliter and conjugated bilirubin also known as direct bilirubin is 0 to 0.2 mg per deciliter so we we should know all these normal values of bilirubin it is an important because when the total bilirubin concentration increases more than 1 mg per deciliter the condition is called as hyperbilirubinemia nemia is used when there is increased level of a compound in the blood so when the bilirubin concentration is more than 1 mg per deciliter it is called as hyperbilirubinemia when the total concentration of bilirubin increases more than 2 mg per deciliter the bilirubin diffuses into the tissues such as sclera conjunctiva skin and mucous membrane and it gives the yellowish color to these tissues it is very important to note down that when the concentration of bilirubin is more than 2 mg per deciliter bilirubin diffuses into the tissues and gives the yellowish color to those tissues so what is jaundice jaundice is a 
clinical condition characterized by hyperbilirubinemia and yellowish discoloration of skin, sclera, conjunctiva and mucous membrane due to the deposition of bilirubin in these tissue. So, it is clearly said that jaundice is a clinical condition. So, it is not a disease, but it is a clinical symptom which can be caused due to multiple factor. Coming to classification of jaundice, it is broadly classified into prehepatic or hemolytic jaundice, hepatic jaundice, post hepatic or obstructive jaundice. Coming to prehepatic jaundice or hemolytic jaundice, why it is called as hemolytic? Because the main cause for this prehepatic jaundice is hemolysis. Hemolysis is the main cause for jaundice that is why it is named as hemolytic jaundice. The causes for hemolysis may be sickle cell anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemias or RH incompatibility. All these can lead to prehepatic jaundice. So, in prehepatic jaundice or hemolytic jaundice, there is excessive destruction of RBC. So, there is more of hemolysis. Normally, per day around 300 milligram of bilirubin is produced. Whenever there is a hemolysis, there is more and more lysis of RBC. But liver has the capacity to conjugate 10 times greater than its normal production. That is, it can conjugate about 3000 milligram of bilirubin per day. So, normal production every day is around 300 milligram of bilirubin, but the capacity of the liver is 10 times greater than the normal production. Even though it has greater capacity, why unconjugated bilirubin is increased? So, whenever there is a massive hemolysis, there is an increased amount of unconjugated bilirubin. Even conjugation is also increased. But the production of unconjugated bilirubin is much faster than it can be conjugated. That is why in hemolytic jaundice, unconjugated bilirubin is elevated. I will explain it again. Whenever there is a massive hemolysis, there is increased production of unconjugated bilirubin. The increased production of unconjugated bilirubin is faster than it can be conjugated in the liver. That is why the unconjugated bilirubin increases in prehepatic jaundice. The other feature in prehepatic jaundice is increased level of urinary uropilinogen. There is increased unconjugated bilirubin, so there is increased conjugation also taking place. All the conjugated bilirubin enters the intestine, then there is formation of urobilinogen. We know that 20 percent percent of the urobilinogen enters the hepatic circulation for enterohepatic circulation. So, this increased enterohepatic circulation increases the urobilinogen into the systemic circulation also. So, all the uro urobilinogen enters the systemic circulation and then it gets excreted through the kidney. That is why urinary urobilinogen is increased in prehepatic jaundice. So, the two important features in prehepatic jaundice is increased unconjugated bilirubin in the serum and increased urinary urobilinogen in the urine. Coming to the next type that is hepatic jaundice. What are the causes for hepatic jaundice? It, it may be because of viral hepatitis such as hepatitis A, B, C, alcoholic hepatitis. Toxins can also cause hepatic type of jaundice such as carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, arsenic, aflatoxins. Some of the drugs can also cause hepatic jaundice such as methotrexate, tetracycline, rifampicin, etc. So, hepatic jaundice may be due to viral cause, alcohol induced, toxin or drug related. What are the features in hepatic jaundice? In the serum, there is increased level of unconjugated bilirubin as well as conjugated bilirubin. 
the total concentration of total bilirubin is increased. That is increased in both unconjugated and conjugated, increased urobilinogen in the urine and the hepatic enzymes are elevated. The two important hepatic enzymes which are elevated in hepatic jaundice are AST and ALT. AST and ALT are transaminases, aspartate aminotransferases and alanine aminotransferases. So, why unconjugated and conjugated bilirubin are increased in hepatic jaundice? In hepatic jaundice, because there is insult to the liver, hepatocytes are damaged. The liver cells are called as hepatocytes. When there is damage to the liver cells, what happens? There is dysfunctioning of the liver. So, liver cells are damaged, it cannot conjugate the unconjugated bilirubin. Due to the decreased conjugation, unconjugated bilirubins are increased. In hepatic jaundice, the hepatocytes are damaged. So, there is decreased conjugation leading to increased unconjugated bilirubin in the blood. When hepatic jaundice goes for progression, there is inflammation or edema takes place which blocks the bile passage. There are some hepatic cells which can con conjugate the bilirubin. Those conjugate bilirubin cannot enter the intestine due to the blockage due to inflammation or edema. So, this is why what happens the conjugated bilirubin regurgitates into the blood and in the blood you will see increased conjugated bilirubin. In hepatic jaundice both types of bilirubin are increased. Why un unconjugated is increased? Because hepatic jaundice decreases the conjugation process. So, unconjugated is increased. Whereas, when the disease progression goes on, there is edema or inflammation of the cell, there is blockage in the bile canaliculi. So, the conjugated bilirubin cannot enter the intestine, instead it regurgitates and increases the level in the blood. Why increased urobilinogen is seen in urine in patients of hepatic jaundice? There is hepatic jaundice, so what happens? There is decreased enterohepatic circulation. So, urobilinogen which are formed in the intestine instead of going for enterohepatic circulation goes more towards the systemic circulation and gets excreted in the kidney. That is why urobilinogens are increased in hepatic jaundice. The two important transaminases are also elevated because whenever there is a hepatic jaundice these enzymes are secreted in the hepatocytes. So, these enzyme secretions will come out to the blood and there is increased level of transaminase in the blood. The last type is post hepatic or obstructive jaundice. In this jaundice it is not because of any overproduction or decreased conjugation, but this is due to the result from obstruction of bile duct, post hepatic or obstructive. The term obstructive is used because in this type of jaundice obstruction is the main cause. So, this obstruction can be classified into intrahepatic obstruction or extrahepatic obstruction. Intrahepatic causes are chronic active hepatitis or obstructive phase of viral hepatitis. Causes for extrahepatic obstructions are presence of gallstone, enlarged lymph nodes obstructing the bile passage or carcinoma of the head of the pancreas. Whenever there is a tumor in the head of the pancreas, it obstructs the bile duct leading to obstructive jaundice. What are the symptoms in obstructive jaundice or post hepatic jaundice? Symptoms are gastrointestinal pain, nausea, pale or clay colored stool, urine darkens upon standing. These are the symptoms and signs seen in patients with post hepatic jaundice. In post hepatic jaundice, conjugated bilirubin is increased in serum and in the urine bile salts and bile acids are increased. 
as the name suggests post hepatic which means the conjugation process is normal there is no damage to the liver. So, once the conjugation takes place in the liver now the conjugated bilirubin gets excited into bile from the bile it has to reach the intestine. Since there is blockage that is post obstruction in the liver, liver regurgitated this conjugated bilirubin. So, the blood levels of conjugated bilirubin is increased, unconjugated bilirubin is normal. So, all these bile salts and bile acids then enters the systemic circulation and they get excreted in the urine. Why there is clay colored stool in post hepatic jaundice? We know that conjugation process is normal in post hepatic jaundice. The conjugated bilirubin cannot enter the intestine as there is obstruction. So, there is no formation of urobilinogen in the intestine. If there is no urobilinogen in the intestine, there is no formation of stercobilin and urobilin which actually gives the color to the stool. That is why since there is oxidized product of urobilinogen and stercobilinogen uh, are not there, there is no color to the stool leading to pale or clay colored stool. Why there is clay color? Because conjugated bilirubin cannot reach the intestine. In the intestine there is no formation of urobilinogen. So, urobilinogen cannot be converted into urobilin and stercobilin that is why there is no color to the stool. And the enzyme which is increased in post hepatic jaundice is ALP. ALP stands for alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Why this enzyme is elevated? The enzyme alkaline phosphatase that is ALP is produced by the epithelial cells of biliary canaliculi. So, whenever there is an obstruction of the bile what happens there is continuous irritation to the epithelial cell. So, this because of the continuous irritation to the epithelial cell the ALP enzyme it gets secreted. So, there is increased level of ALP in the blood. The enzyme ALP or alkaline phosphatase that is produced in the epithelial cells. Because of there is obstruction the bile irritates this epithelial cell and the enzyme comes out of the epithelial cell and the levels are increased in the blood. So, we have learned today prehepatic hepatic and post hepatic jaundice what are its causes and the biochemical basis for the same. To summarize what is jaundice? Jaundice is not a disease it is a clinical symptom. The causes for jaundice are multifactorial. Jaundice is seen when the bilirubin concentration is more than 2 milligram per deciliter. There are two types of bilirubin conjugated and unconjugated. The classification of jaundice are prehepatic, hepatic and post hepatic. Prehepatic means before the bilirubin reaches the liver. So, the prehepatic causes are mainly hemolysis that is why the prehepatic is also called as hemolytic jaundice. So, what are the causes for hemolysis? It may be massive hemolysis such as seen in case of sickle cell anemia, RH incompatibility, malaria etc. So, because of there is hemolysis there is more of unconjugated bilirubin that is why in prehepatic jaundice unconjugated bilirubin is increased in serum and urinary urobilinogen is increased in urine. The second type which we discussed was hepatic jaundice as the name suggests hepatic means the liver is involved. So, because of there is damage to the liver conjugation process is affected. So, there is increased unconjugated bilirubin. Conjugated protein is co conjugated bilirubin is also increased because the edema or the inflammation blocks the bile duct. So, that there is no passage of the conjugated bilirubin into the intestine. The hepatocyte secretes two important enzymes AST and ALT. These two are transaminases in the blood the levels of both the transaminases increases. The causes for hepatic jaundice are multiple it may be because of drugs, toxins, viruses or alcohol induced. Coming to last that is post hepatic 
as the name suggest it is after the liver so there is no problem in the liver it is after the liver the other name for post hepatic is obstructive jaundice due to obstruction is the main cause the causes for obstruction are classified into intrahepatic and extrahepatic because there is obstruction there is increased conjugated bilirubin in the serum the bile salts and bile acids are excreted in the urine and there is clay colored stool there is no color to the stool that's why it is called as clay or pale colored stool because of the obstruction the conjugated bilirubin cannot reach the intestine and the intestine there is no production of urobilinogen which can oxidized into urobilin and stercobilin so there is no formation of this oxidized product leading to clay colored stool the only one enzyme which is elevated in post hepatic jaundice is alkaline phosphatase because it is secreted from the epithelial cells of the biliary canaliculi because of the obstruction the bile irritates these epithelial cells so there is release of this enzyme and in the blood the levels of alp are increased so this completes the biochemical basis for different types of jaundice so this lets tells about the complete picture of prehepatic hepatic and post hepatic jaundice which we discussed thank you for watching